evening. It's good to see you guys here tonight. Um, I'm going to get into a little bit of time of worship tonight that I'll invite you guys to join me with. Uh, might need a little bit extra help because I uh, got a little tickle in the back of my throat. I don't know. I've been hanging out on the back porch today. It was so nice, and I might have got a little pollen or something, so I might need a little bit of help. But anyway, let's go ahead. Let's stand. Let's open up with a word of prayer, and we'll, uh, we'll uh, have a time of worship together tonight. Father God, thank you for allowing us to be back here again in, uh, in your house, Lord. I just want to turn this time to you. Uh, put away the distractions of this week, Lord, and just truly focus and worship you, Lord. It's through you that all things are good, and you do amazing things for us, Lord, and we appreciate that every day. So we turn this time to you, Lord. It's your name I pray. Amen. Oh, Lord, my when I, an awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art.
jealous for me Love's like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath Wave is wind and mercy When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions Eclipsed by glory And I'll realize just how beautiful you are How great your affections are for me And oh, how he loves us so Oh, how he loves us how he loves us And he is jealous for me Love's like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath The weight of his wind and mercy When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions Eclipsed by the Lord And oh, how he loves us so Oh, how he loves us How he loves us so Yeah, he loves us Oh, how he loves us And he is upright, drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes. If grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. So heaven meets earth like a passionate kiss, and my heart turns violently inside my chest. I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Yeah, he loves us. Us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. You may be seated. Well, it's good to see y'all uh, tonight here in uh, this little stormy night, <laughs> but that's okay. I guess we needed the rain, didn't we? I want you to turn with, with me to Luke, Luke uh, chapter 10, and this is the story of the Good Samaritan. It's just a story, or one of the stories about the Good Samaritan, and it's entitled, this is entitled, Passed By on the Other Side. Passed By on the Other Side. What do you do when you see somebody in need? 
What do I do when I see somebody in need? What is a Christian supposed to do when they see somebody in need? You know, I grew up in the country, lived so far back in the sticks, shot at a mailman, thought as a Union soldier, and you'll catch that pretty soon. But back there in the sticks, and being in, you know, back yonder and way back yonder, neighborly, we helped our neighbor. You remember those days? Yeah, we helped our neighbor. We lived on that farm and uh, the farm, and uh, sometimes neighbors needed help, and we would go, we would go help them. And they didn't have to come around begging for help. It's just, that's just the way, that's just the way it was. That's just the way it was. And folks, that's a good way to be. Amen? Somebody say amen. That's, that's, that was, that's a good way to be. From Luke chapter 10, beginning with verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How do you read? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said unto him, You have answered right, this this do, and thou shalt live. And he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, which is probably, this, this, this road was probably 20, 25, 15, 20, 25, 30 miles. And it has actually been called the pass of blood because robbers like to be there. Anyway, they went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, wounded him departed, leaving him half dead. Now, who's going to take care of this wounded, hurt man who's, according to this, is half dead? Who's going to take care of him? Well, I'm sure if a preacher goes by, he'll stop and help. Well, let's see. (laughs) Oh, boy. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, I wonder what he did. Was he walking along and looked at him and said, oh, man, I'm in a hurry. I don't have time for him. And this is going to take a lot of time and promise some money. So what does, what does this preacher do, this, this priest, what does he do? He just kept walking. He, now, this is the pastor of the First Baptist Church. In Jericho. What, what's he, what, this, folks, this, anyway. Leaving him half dead, and by chance there came down this certain priest that way. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Now here comes the assistant pastor. <laughs> and likewise, a Levite, when he was at that place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. Now, this, this is the phrase that gets me. And he looked on him and passed by. Now, here comes the Samaritan. Uh, folks, we, we really don't understand now how the Samaritans were looked, at, looked on. They were despised. They were hated. And when Jesus told this story, this is a masterful <laughs> part of the story. He has this Samaritan coming along. Now, the priest wouldn't stop. The Levi wouldn't stop. Now, here he comes. See him down the road? He's a Samaritan. He won't stop because he, he's not that religious. Those Samaritans, you know you know those Samaritans? And, and then you get this long list and description of the Samaritans. Because they hated these, these Samaritans. And that's another story. And that would be another story. And a certain Samaritan. And my dear friends, I want to tell you, this is a masterful way to tell a story. If you want to get a, a point across. As he journeyed, came where he was. 
And when he saw him, now let's stop right here after this next phrase, and had compassion on him. Compassion is the answer. Tell me, what is compassion? Is compassion, is compassion caring? Is it caring for somebody? Do we really care? There's a song, Do You Really Care? How many have heard that song? Yes. Do you really care? Compassion? He had compassion on him. What else is compassion? Compassion is seeing, caring, and then doing something. Amen? Well, I guess I oughta. I guess I oughta. Now, that's, that's Bullinger County for ought to. I oughta. We ought to take the word oughta out. <laughs> right? And use the word ought to. I ought to. I ought to. Well, this certain Samaritan... As he journeyed, came, and when he saw him, he had compassion. Did the next thing that he did, he went to him. Now, you realize, as I said before, this is known historically as the pass of blood, and there may have been more thieves out there. That may have been one reason that the priest didn't stop. He just plain afraid, and the Levite didn't stop. He's plain afraid. And he went to him in this place. Number one, he wound up his wounds. Hmm. Pouring in oil and wine, which was a, the medicine of that day, set him on his own beast, which is probably a little donkey, as we call him today, or a burrow, or maybe a mule or a horse, I don't know, brought him to an inn and took care of him. That is, he paid for it. Now, let's see what this Samaritan's done. When he got there, he stopped, he saw, and he cared. He went to him, he bound up his wounds, put him on his own beast, whatever it was, and took him to an inn and took care of him. And on the tomorrow when he departed, he took out two pence, which I am told was two, at least two days' wages in those days, and gave them to the, to the host and said unto him, Take care of him. And whatsoever you spend more, when I come again, I'll repay you. Now, this Samaritan, this despised Samaritan, is very generous. And then is there's this question. And now of these three, who do you think was a neighbor unto him? that fell among the thieves. And he said unto him, He that showed mercy on him, then said Jesus, Go and do thou likewise. Well, what did the Samaritan do? First of all, he looked. <laughs> I know this may sound simple, but folks, People in this world are hurting. This world is hurting. And I, I want to tell you, folks, sometimes I get tired of, of and, and I don't listen to many sermons, this, that, and the other, on sermons on what's going on in Ukraine. We don't live in Ukraine. How many of you live in Ukraine? What about your neighbor across the street? What about the one down the road? What about a friend? 
What about a relative? And these preachers will preach. And, and I believe in preaching on the end times. And I have sermons, and you've heard me preach that. You know, well, it's, it's a bad look at the world. That's just a sign of its, its coming. Okay. I would agree. But you're on the road, and right over there is somebody who has a need. And in our community, and in this community, my dear friends, there are needs. Amen? I'm preaching now, folks. You can say amen anytime you want to. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. So he stopped, and he looked, and he walked over there. He wound up, or wound up. He took his, whatever he had, where he was wounded, and took care of him. Then when he got to the inn, now I don't know how much it was, but you know, folks, he was very generous. Now let me give you some points. This help was from an unexpected source because it was a Samaritan. <laughs> and I don't think, and even I don't, I don't understand this animosity. But he overlooked that. He dismissed that, and he stopped. And he went over to him, as I said, and had compassion and took him to an inn. God has made humanity our neighbor. You know what I mean? He has made humanity our neighbor. Growing up as a kid, many years ago, I used to wonder what was going on in neighbors and with neighbors. Now, let me tell you about one neighbor that we had, John Yunt. You went out the road from our farm and you came to this other road, and over here lived John Yunt. What was so unusual about John Yunt? What was in his barn? It wasn't a goat. It wasn't a chicken. It wasn't anything like that. It was a car. C-A-R. And I was fascinated by his car. You know what it was? About a 1932-33 cord. Very rare even in those days. Very, very rare. And every two weeks, he if it wasn't raining, he would drive it into Patton. He would drive it back out to his farm. He'd get out all the rags and he'd clean that car up on the inside under Everywhere, I mean, he'd shine it. Then he'd take the canvas, and he would cover it up. And then, oh, I wanted to ride in that car. Believe me. I'm a kid, and I want to ride in that car. And one day he said to me, how would you like to ride with me to Patton? <laughs> how would I like to ride with him to Patton? Ooh, boy. Would I? So he took that canvas off. He cranked this old card up, and off to Patton we went. You know what I could get at Patton, too? An ice cream cone. You remember those days? Yes. There at the store. Oh, boy. But I got to ride in that car. 
You know what John Yunt was being? He was being a good neighbor to a little boy. And as long as I live, I will never forget John Yunt. Why? Because he was good to that little boy. Now, John, has, he was a United Methodist, and I have a lot of Methodist relatives in Bullinger County. He was a United Methodist, very faithful, very, very faithful. And I'm sure he's in heaven because I know John was, was saved. I, it, it, and someday, I'll see him. Now, I want to ask you a question. Do you think when I get there, and he's already there, that we're going to sit down and talk about riding in that car? <laughs> no, I think probably there will be so many glories in heaven that won't talk, we won't talk about riding in a car. Because when I get to heaven, you know the first person I'm going to see God, I'm going to get to see what God looks like. Amen? I'm going to get, and you're going to get to see what God looks like. Have you ever, have you ever wondered what God looks like? How many of you know what God looks like? Oh, you don't? Someday you will. You'll get to see what God looks looks like now I want to close with this one little verse it's not a little verse it's a big verse not many words for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life for God who's that that's the person that created the universe the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God. Now God didn't begin at the beginning. God always has been. He began the beginning. He didn't start at the beginning. In the beginning God created. And that word for creation means fiat creation. He spoke it into existence. He spoke it into existence. God, for God so loved the world, that's you, that he what? Gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have what? What kind of life? Everlasting life. Think about that. Two billion years from now, we're still going to be up there. Now, let's suppose that from here to the wall back there is a billion years. Well, to make it more understandable, I'll say a million years. So we slowly go across this million years. And when we get back there, We've just barely begun. Isn't that something? Amen and amen. See, that's what eternal life means. I've had people to kind of question me on that, just a couple of people from years ago. Well, what does eternal mean? For always. For always. For always. Amen. And amen. And back to that road. That Samaritan. Acted like. A son. Of the living God. Amen. And God wants us to go out. Into this community. And act like a 
a child of God. Amen and amen. Let's bow in prayer. Father, help us to be the kind of witness that bears fruit, that helps people, that is kind, compassionate, and understanding. Bless these people in a very special way and be with our church. We pray that you'll be with Mitch and Cindy. Be with Cindy especially, Father. We pray for her and for so, for so many others. Go with us now and help us and forgive us. As we pray in the name of Christ, amen. Uh, Brother Jim, you got anything you want to say? No? Okay. All right, folks, you're free to go home or go to McDonald's or someplace else. How's that?